Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a racing and driving game in Unity and welcome to episode 8. So this episode we're going to look at some track boundaries and we're going to look at some camera angles and we're also going to start off our actual race by allowing our AI car to start at the same time as we do because currently when we press play the AI car goes straight off so we need to stop that from happening. So what we need to do is in our car waypoint based here which is the AI car turn off this car AI control and we need to go to the JavaScript that we wrote, which is car control active. And in here, all we need to do is we add in a new variable, which is going to be called dreamcar01, because that's the name of our uh, first AI car. So var dreamcar01, and that's going to be of type game object. And we're going to use the exact same method that we've used here. So it'll be dreamcar01.getComponent. And in brackets and quotes, we need to put that script name that we had, which was called car AI control. So car AI control dot enabled equals true. So it works on the same principle that we've got for our player car. It's disabled at the start of pressing play, but then when the script is enabled, it turns it on. So we press play and both cars can start at the same time. We should hopefully see our AI car. Nope, it's not worked. So it's not liking this at all. So car AI control, why is that not working? Let's have a look here. So it's saying that, um, yeah, so let's check that we do have it actually right. So car AI control, yeah, it is the same, isn't it? So let's copy the script name and let's paste it into there save but of course we didn't set the um actual variable did we so we need to go on car control manager drag and drop into there usually if something doesn't work in unity always check in your inspector panel that your variables set correctly happens to the best of us so here we go so you can see that the AI car is starting there as well Okay, so next thing we need to do is let's set up some track boundaries. So a track boundary is the case of we can't let our car go outside of this area. And in all honesty, it's, it's pretty easy to do. I like to do it by using giant cubes. Now, realistically, if you're doing this for an Android device, a giant cube is going to be the best way to do it because you're using less resources. So game object, 3D object, cube. And you just need to drag the cube into the area where you are most likely to encounter a barrier. So, for example, all the way along this ridge here. So we can extend the scale on the Z by dragging like so. And we can extend higher. So we'll extend that high. And then we just drag it into position. So about there, let's say. And you can always change the rotation if it's diagonal. So let's change it on the Y to about there. And then let's increase that size again and bring it a bit more into position. So there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a brand new game object. So game object, create empty, right click, rename. I'm just going to call this track barriers. And then I'm just going to drag and drop the cube into there. Duplicate that cube and just drag it along and place it into the next section where we want the barrier to be. So let's rotate it a little more about there. It doesn't matter if these objects intersect because at the end of the day, what happens is we turn off that uh, mesh renderer. So I'm gonna quickly do this one here just to show you how it's done. And you can always just insert new objects or different shaped objects if you need to. So for example, here we could have a game object, a 3D object, and let's go with cylinder. Bring it up here and into place, and let's just extend it really. So let's have it on the X as 10 maybe, on the Y as 20, and Z as 10. And we can put it on the corner here, so we can extend it even more. So let's have it as 30 by 30. 
So essentially all that's happening here is we're using the box collider as a reference point of saying this is where you can no longer drive the vehicle. And once again, just drag that cylinder into there. Let's have another game object, 3D object cube. And let's bring it into place up here. Let's extend. And on the Y. And do some rotation. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on how you can actually do this. because I'm not going to teach you guys to suck eggs. It, it's pretty easy to do. It's a case of getting everything as precise as you would like it to be. And the final thing that you would do in this case is to turn off the mesh renderer for those objects. So you can select all the objects in that game object and then one tick mesh renderer. You'll see you're just left with the box colliders of each object. And if you try driving into them, you've got no chance of actually getting past it. So we can try as much as we would like, but we're not getting through the track barrier. So we just kind of hit an invisible wall, as it were. It's up to you how you want to tackle this kind of uh, situation, whether you want to put uh, perhaps maybe rocks uh, where the invisible walls would be, or some other kind of thing. But I'm not going to do the boundary the whole way around the track in this tutorial because that would just be completely wasting time. So what I'm going to do is on the next live stream I do, um, which is probably going to be in September, um, I'm going to... First of all, sort out uh, the seventh marker point because I was meant to do that uh, in a live stream in August, but I haven't. So I'll be doing that on the next one as well as doing the entirety of the um, boundary around the track. So let's get on to some more fun things, shall we? Should we sort out a camera angle script? So obviously in many games these days, you can change the camera angle just at the press of a key or a button on controller or whatever, really. So the idea of what we're going to do is we're going to set up three different uh, cameras in total. So we'll have two extra cameras and we'll have three possibilities. So let's set a key to set as our camera key. So if we go to edit, let's go to project settings and let's go to input, click on the arrow next to the axis. And then where we've got size 18, by default it's 18, if you've got higher, Make sure you just add one to whatever yours is. So if yours is 18, like mine, you would hit 19 and then enter. If yours is, let's say, 25, you would type 26 and then hit enter. It will duplicate whatever is last. So in this case, let's name the uh, actual button it's going to be, and let's call it view mode. And the positive button is going to be the button we're going to use. In this case, let's have the button, or rather key, C on the keyboard. So obviously, if you intend to use a controller at some later point, which we'll probably do in this tutorial, we'll explain a little bit more how we do that anyway. So we're going to be using a C-sharp script. So let's create it. New C-sharp script. And let's call this one camera change. Uh, change. So I'm going to open it up in uh, Mono Develop or Visual Studio. And then we're going to declare a couple of variables and then head back to Unity. And then we'll sort our cameras there. So firstly, let's get rid of the void start and any notes because we don't need them. We're starting afresh. So let's start with public game object and let's start with the normal camera. So the camera that we have right now. So normal cam. Next one, let's have public game object and this is going to be a far cam, so a more distant view. So far cam. And the next one, let's have it a first person camera. So you wouldn't see the car, you just see the road in front of you. Public game object. And let's have it called FP cam. And the final thing we need is an integer to tell us which camera mode we are currently in. Public int cam <laughs> mode. So the idea of what we're going to do here, void update. What we'll do is we're going to do some if statements and basically what it's doing, checking our camera mode. So we'll have a separate, um, well, well be an I enumerator, which will actually do the change itself. So firstly, let's head back to Unity. Let's set our cameras. So first, 
camera that we had is the normal camera, which is, uh, is it, it's not this one, is it? Let's do a search. So it is a main camera right there, which is attached to the car itself. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is let's duplicate this camera and do control D. Rename the first camera and call it normal cam. Second one, we will rename to far cam and we'll set that in place now. So if we drag it backwards, upwards and let's rotate on the X just a little more. So we have it about there. And then let's take the normal cam again, hold control, press D, F2 to rename and let's call it FP cam. Obviously you guys probably guessed it by now. Drag it down a bit more to the road and drag it to the front of the car about there and maybe just bring it up a little bit and increase the X just a bit. So there we have our first person view. So disable the FP cam and then disable the far cam because by default, as I say, we have the normal camera. So what we need to do is if and in brackets input dot get button down and in brackets and quotes we do view mode which if you remember we set in our edit settings and input settings uh, quote close bracket close bracket again and open curly bracket and what we need to do now is basically is if cam mode equals two then what we need to do is set the cam mode to zero so cam mode equals zero semicolon I said I think that might be three we will see what happens as we get further on I think it might be three well I'll change it to three for now and see what happens because we do we have zero one and two so let's see how this goes uh, we also need an else statement because basically what we're saying is if it isn't equals to three then we just add one to it so we do cam mode plus equals one. So it'll start off as zero. If we press the C key, it will adjust the cam mode to one. If it's one, it'll do it to two and so on. Uh, so close bracket on that else statement. And then underneath there, what we need to do is start the coroutine, which is going to be the I enumerator. So start coroutine and in brackets, let's call it mode change open close bracket close bracket again semicolon and then close curly bracket to close the uh, void uh, sorry the if statement and this one should close the void update which is fine that one closes the class so after void update we need i enumerator and mode change open close bracket open curly bracket go down a few lines and just close curly bracket just so as it changes it to blue changes mode change to black there which means it's all linking just fine and what we're going to do is we're going to yield return new wait for seconds and we're going to wait for just a split second before we do any camera changing so we're going to wait for 0.01 f this just allows the game a brief moment kind of compose itself as it were that's the best way to put it so after that <clears throat> what we need to do is do an if statement and we say if cam mode equals to zero then what we need to do is have the normal camera set as active so normal cam dot set active true semicolon and all we need to put now is fp cam dot set active false. Now the reason we don't put the far cam set active as false is because there's no possible way that we can get to zero with the far camera being enabled because mode number two means that the fp cam is enabled and we're going to turn that off because we're going to reset it to zero. So the same logic applies for mode one. So if cam mode equals one, 
then we do the following. We set the far cam as active. True. And then we set the normal cam as inactive. Dot set active false. And then we close that if statement. And then the final one is if cam mode equals two, then fp cam dot set active true and far cam dot set active false semicolon close curly bracket and this uh, curly bracket closes the i enumerator mode change and this one closes the entire class so let's save that script so just to quickly run through what's happening here is we, it's constantly monitoring for us pressing the view mode key, which is the C key. If it does, if it isn't equal to three, it will add one to whatever we have. So because it's set to zero, the first time we press it, it's going to be equal to one and it's going to set the normal camera off and the far camera on. If we press it again, it'll set that far camera off and put the FP cam on again. If we press it again, it means that the cam mode is equal to three, so it'll instantly set it back to zero, which means the FP cam will go off and the normal cam will come on. It's also worth noting that when we do this, the camera coming on should always come on first before the other camera goes off. Otherwise, you may end up with a split second with no camera, in which case the game will just kind of give a black screen for a frame. It's, it's not worth taking that chance. So it's always best to have that extra camera on first before turning camera off. So if we head back to Unity, game object, create empty, F2, and let's call this view mode object. And you've probably guessed it by now. All we need to do is just drag and drop that camera change onto there and then fill in the um, variables just over here, far cam and FP cam. And let's press play and give this a go. So as we race, we should be able to see, if we press C, we go to a far out view. Press it again, we go to first person view. Press it again, we can see that we can keep changing the camera angle. Like so. So one thing I've noticed here is it's kind of gone a little bit funny there. If I think that does need to be two because zero, one, two, there is three possible modes. So having three will give it four possible modes. So we'll keep it as two there. And when we press play now, we should be able to get the three camera angles consistently. There we go. Yep, that works just fine. Okay, so next episode, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at some music and we'll look at saving the lap time and we'll look at brushing up on a couple of little bugs that we have uh, in the game so far. I think sound effects is a little bug that we've had or we've just encountered at least. Some of you have probably um, had it by the end of this episode, but we're going to do a little debug session as well and get everything kind of sorted out for the next big step. So yeah, music and lap saving is the main things next time as well as a little bit of bug solving. So guys, until then, thank you very much for watching.